So I decided to do a musical pun in my uh, presentation title as well, um, Good Vibrations. I think it's actually one of the most beautiful songs if you listen to it on headphones, but all of that aside. Uh, so yeah, so I'm Hans, I'm the uh, owner of Red Geographics um, out of the Netherlands, and uh, we kind of work in GIS and cartography. Um, basically, we, we try and do any kind of interesting project, anything I like to do, really. Um, and also, I guess important to know is that we're the local reseller for events and systems, so my publisher and, and geographic imager, and also safe software, so FME. And I want to talk about um, the map that I made for Daniel Huffman's projection trading cards project. Uh, so when he came up with that idea, I thought, you know what, I'm going to do the good interrupted homeless sign projection because it looks cool. And I hadn't actually done it before. And so I quite quickly came to the realization that uh, my publisher, which is obviously my preferred tool, um, only supported the uninterrupted version. So I had to do a little bit of extra work to, well, make it work. So first, a little bit about the projection itself. It's equal area. Um, it's sometimes nicknamed the orange peel projection. And really what it is, it's actually two projections sort of MacGyvered together. Um, we actually, we had an internal discussion. Should I use the word MacGyvering or Frankensteining? But we, we figured that MacGyvering would be more professional. <laughs> uh, so between 40 degrees north and south, it's a sinusoidal projection and everywhere else it's Molvide. And if you look very closely at the edges of the map, you can actually see a little kink where the curvature changes. And the interrupted version, the most commonly used one, has uh, six lobes, two in the north and four in the southern hemisphere, and they're not symmetrical. And um, inspired by a Rand McNally atlas from the 1980s that I've got, I decided to add extensions to cover Greenland and Siberia completely so that no major landmass is cut by one of, the, um, one of the interruptions. So what did I do? Uh, first of all, I looked at the map and I determined the extents of every lobe as well as their central meridians. Then I cropped my source data, natural earth in this case, I cropped it to each of those lobes using FME. So per lobe of the projection, I had a separate set of source data. And I imported all of those into my publisher. And within my publisher, I made a separate map view for every lobe. Um, using a custom copy of the existing good projection within my publisher. And so just changing the central meridian. Uh, so for those of, you who, those of you who don't use my publisher, a map view is basically a collection of layers that have a, uh, the same scale and projection and position on your map. So essentially it's a map view. Um, then came the hard part. Because this is technically, this is six separate maps. But they're pretending to be one. And so I had to line them up exactly. Uh, so that took a little bit of work, a um, little bit of hard work, to be honest. And then also because of the clipping of the data, there were some errors along the edges where some of the meridian lines were in one lobe but not in the other one, and I kind of wanted them in both. So there was a little bit of manual fixing uh, along the edges. And so, yeah, so the end result is indeed six maps pretending to be one. So this is one of those things where if you have, like, you see it in comedy movies. You know, a couple of children standing on each other's shoulders in a large trench coat pretending to be an adult. This is the map equivalent of that. <laughs> and so I actually recorded a video of me doing it. I'm not going to thwart the demo demons. And of course now the demo demons are striking back at me by making the resolution absolutely terrible. So let's see if this is actually going to improve if I actually play the movie. It's actually not too bad. So I'm not going to go through the positioning of all of the six lobes. I'm just going to do the last three. And what I'm doing is I'm using the Map Publisher Map View Editor to position them. And one of the things you can do in there is you can use the fine tuning option. And so because the, the two northern lobes are horizontally aligned, I can just copy the, uh, the Y position of one of them and paste it into the other one. So at least the horizontal alignment is easy. And then it's just a matter of tweaking the X value until they visually line up. It's, I mean, it's really not more high tech than that. 
Um, it, what I'm always saying, it doesn't have to be accurate. It only needs to look like it. So if it, you know, if it looks visually okay, I'm, I'm happy enough. <laughs> In my imagination, I had more to talk about at this part of the <laughs> presentation. Well, while I'm at it, what you can see is I've actually uh, made separate layers for um, all of the content and then split them out for all of the lobes. And I'm using a, a naming convention to make sure I know which, uh, which layer belongs to which lobe. So it's N1 and 2, Northern 1 and 2, and then Southern uh, 1 through 4. And this is actually slightly tedious to do for, uh, for a large map. It's, um, the Map Publisher Map View Editor is a great tool, but there is some usability improvements that can be made. Um, so Nick, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you about that uh, later on. So that's it. That's really all it takes. Oh, now it's going to continue playing, of course. Jeez. So a couple of useful tips if you want to do this yourself. Um, and really, it's, it's also useful tips for using uh, multiple map views within Map Publisher, which is, of course, something that happens more often if you have a main map and an inset map. Um, be very careful with your layer naming. Um, it really helps if you uh, give unique names to the layers for every map view that you have, because um, if the layer names are the same, they'll, well, they'll show up as the same layer names within all of the Map Publisher dialogues, and you won't be able to tell them apart. So a lot of the Map Publisher tools, like Map Themes, they actually work across map views. Um, so I can actually have one map theme that covers six layers and six different map views. Um, I decided to pre-process and separate all of my source data. Um, as shown earlier today, you can actually have my publisher clip upon import, but I just wanted to make sure it was all proper and, and ready to go uh, before that. Um, I might be slightly too much of a control freak when it comes to stuff like that. Um, so then, where will we go with this? Well, we actually recently, like last week, we signed a lease on our new office space, and it has a big empty wall, which actually has pretty much the correct dimensions for this map projection. <laughs> so we haven't actually made up our mind whether or not we're going to do this, but uh, I'm, I'm going to make a strong case for this, and of course I want to make the map. And you can actually get your copy of this as well, not only in the projection trading cards, but we also made t-shirts. <laughs> so if you want them, head over to bluegeographics.com, our side business, and, uh, and yeah, order yours. <laughs> so thank you very much. I hope this was useful. And uh, finally, I want to say I'm really happy to be back at NASIS. It's like coming home. <laughs>